I love ice cream. It's one of life's simple pleasures. But the science, that's much more complex. At its core, ice cream is a product of phase transition. In this case, water freezing into ice. Two things that greatly impact the texture of ice cream are the amount of the water in the ice cream base that freezes and how quickly that transition takes place. So one of the biggest challenges for the home cook is making ice cream that is dense, smooth, and free of noticeable iciness. What's interesting is that all things being equal, ice cream that we perceive as icy doesn't actually contain more ice crystals, just bigger ones. The crystals in smooth ice cream are so small that our tongues can't even detect them. So there are two basic ways to prevent ice cream from having an icy texture. The first is to control the water in the base. Now this could mean reducing the overall water content. It could also mean keeping more of the water in liquid form by adjusting sweeteners. Sweeteners lower the freezing point of the water in the mixture, preventing some of it from turning to ice. Or you can use ingredients like starches and gums, which trap free water and prevent it from forming large ice crystals. The second way to prevent an icy texture is to make sure that the ice crystals that do form are as small as possible. Here we're talking about rate of freezing. The faster you freeze ice cream, the smaller the ice crystals will be. Now commercial ice cream manufacturers have a lot of advantages over the home cook when it comes to making ice cream. They have powerful stabilizers and professional freezers and blast chillers that can turn a liquid custard into a semi-solid ice cream in a matter of seconds. That's not something you can do at home. And believe me, in America's Test Kitchen, we try to. So here are the ingredients for our vanilla ice cream. I'm using a combination of heavy cream and milk for the right level of richness. Now fat also helps reduce the perception of ice crystals by lubricating your tongue. Now I'm using fresh vanilla bean for its complex flavor, and I'm going to add it early in the process to get maximum flavor out of it. So next up, we have the sweeteners, which have a huge impact on texture. I'll come back to that point in just a minute. Here I'm using granulated sugar, which is pretty common, and corn syrup, which is not. Now, corn syrup is a combination of sweet glucose molecules, which make it sweet, and chains of broken cornstarch. So it's these chains of tangled cornstarch which give corn syrup its viscosity. Now in our ice cream, they prevent water molecules from grouping and freezing into big crystals. So I'm going to add both of my dairies. This is my heavy cream. And the milk. I've got my sugar, my corn syrup, uh, and I've got a little bit of salt, which is going to help balance the flavor. And I'm going to add both the vanilla bean pod and the seeds that I've scraped from it. Okay, so now I'm going to heat this mixture until it registers about 175 degrees, which should take 5 to 10 minutes. So while this heats up, I'm going to whisk together six large egg yolks and a bit more granulated sugar in this large bowl. When you're separating eggs, it's a lot easier to do it cold. The yolks are far less likely to break. Let's whisk this together. Okay, that looks good. So the base for our ice cream is an egg thickened custard. And the yolks will turn our thin dairy into a thick custard through coagulation. As the yolks are heated, tightly wound balls of protein begin to unwind. They find each other and then they bond together into a web-like network. And this network slows the flow of free water, which makes the liquid thicker. This also means that the ice cream will taste richer and the ice crystals will be smaller. So now that our mixture has reached 175 degrees, I'm gonna slowly add a cup of it to our egg mixture. Now this is a step called tempering. And what I'm doing is slowly raising the temperature of my egg mixture, which is gonna help prevent it from overcooking when I add it back to the liquid. If I weren't to do this, and I just add my egg mixture directly to the cream, there's a good chance that it'll overcook and scramble. Okay, so now that I've done that and brought this up to a warmer temperature, I'm going to whisk this back in to my dairy mixture. So 
So now that I've got my dairy and my eggs together, I'm going to return this to the heat and I'm going to bring it slowly up to 180 degrees, at which point the eggs will have thickened it into a custard. Okay, so my mixtures come up to 180 degrees. Now I want to get it out of this pan before it overcooks. So I'm going to pour it into this large bowl over here. And I'm going to let this sit until it stops steaming. Okay, so now that this mixture has stopped steaming, it's not as hot as it was, I'm going to transfer one cup of it to a smaller bowl. I'm going to cover both the bowls with plastic wrap. So I'll transfer this large bowl to the fridge and the small bowl is going to go into the freezer. I'll explain a little bit more of why I'm doing that in just a minute. Okay, so while that chills, let's talk more about the role of sugar in ice cream. We all know that if you put water in the freezer, it transitions from a liquid to a solid block of ice. Why then does ice cream emerge soft and scoopable? One of the main reasons is sugar. So we know that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or zero degrees centigrade. But the addition of sugar makes it harder for water molecules to form ice crystals. This means that the temperature at which the liquid freezes is much lower. Now the more dissolved sugar in the water, the greater this effect will be. So when the ice cream base reaches normal freezing temperatures, around 32 degrees, only some of the water transitions to ice crystals. This means that there is still some free water with a high concentration of sugar still left in the mix. Now as the temperature drops and more and more water becomes ice crystals, the remaining sugar syrup becomes more concentrated and even less likely to freeze. The result is that fully frozen ice cream still contains a fair amount of liquid water, it makes it scoopable right out of the freezer. So to illustrate this point, I've made three raspberry sherbets with increasing amounts of sugar. Now all three samples were chilled and churned in the same way, and all three are at the exact same temperature, about zero degrees Fahrenheit. So the first sherbet is made with no additional sugar, only what was naturally in the raspberries. As you can see, it's very hard and icy. I can actually crumble it off with my spoon. The second one has a cup of additional sugar, so a lot more than the first one. As you can see, it's a little bit easier to scoop and, and significantly smoother than the first one. This last one has two cups of additional sugar, so it's quite sweet. But as you can see, it's very soft, very smooth. So as the amount of sugar increases, the amount of water that remains liquid also increases, making it far more scoopable and a lot creamier. Now, let's talk about how faster freezing leads to smaller ice crystals. I'm using a home ice cream maker, so to speed up the freezing of the ice cream, I already froze a portion of the base straight up. Now, when I combine the two, I'll be starting with a much colder mixture, which will then freeze in less time. I'm using a scoop to get the frozen ice cream out, so it's in smaller pieces and it'll dissolve faster. Okay, so now I'm just going to stir this to dissolve the frozen ice cream. So now that the frozen mixture has dissolved in the refrigerated mixture, um, my base is about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to strain it at this point. Now I'm using a fine mesh strainer, and this is going to catch any bits of egg that overcooked while I was heating it on the stove. And then also, the vanilla pod will come out. Now I've left it in this whole time so I can get the maximum amount of flavor out of it. Scrape to make sure I get everything out. And the vanilla seeds are small enough that they'll actually go right through. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now it's time to churn. Now there are two basic styles of ice cream maker available to home cooks. Now there's the canister style. It's a little bit less expensive, but a lot less convenient. So you need a cold freezer to put it in, ideally below zero degrees Fahrenheit, and quite a bit of room for it to fit. This whole canister needs to go in. In addition, it needs to be frozen for at least 24 hours before each use. So you really can't make more than one flavor of ice cream in a day. On the other hand, we have self-refrigerating models such as the snow. 
that require no freezer space or pre-planning. We start this style five to ten minutes before pouring in the custard in order to make sure it's really cold. Okay, so now it's time to churn. I've got my machine, it's been running for five to ten minutes. I'm gonna make sure the blade is spinning and I'm just gonna pour it right in. Great. So most home ice cream recipes would usually call for churning for about 30 minutes and sometimes up to 40 minutes. Now we're looking for about 21 degrees soft serve consistency and that's only going to take us about 15 minutes because we super chilled that base. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes. So the base is now transitioned from a thick liquid to soft serve consistency. It now registers about 21 degrees and it's ready to come out of the machine. So again, to ensure small ice crystals, I want this ice cream to fully harden as quickly as possible. So to make this happen, I'm going to spread it into a thin layer in a pre-frozen metal baking pan. And after about an hour, I can transfer it to a sealed container for full storage. get every little last bit off. I'm just gonna spread it into an even layer. So by providing more surface area and a thinner layer of ice cream, it's gonna freeze a lot faster. I'm gonna press my plastic wrap right onto the surface. pop it right into the freezer. After being in the baking pan for an hour, I transferred it to this container and then I let it harden for at least two hours, but it can go for a lot longer. And because the corn syrup is in there, we actually have a longer shelf life. Most homemade ice cream doesn't last much longer than overnight. This can be, be good for about a week in the freezer. So let's scoop some and see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's nice and thick and dense. And I'll take a little try just to make sure it's good and doesn't have any ice. Mm, that's good. It's really nice and dense, very smooth, and there's really no noticeable ice crystals because we made them nice and small. So by understanding and controlling the phase transition of water to ice, we get ice cream that's scoopable right from the freezer. It's dense, it's creamy, and most importantly, it's perfectly smooth.